Hey, everybody. This is Hondo Carpenter from Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast, joined by my good friend, the great Matt Halatic, the editor and publisher of thespun.com. It's great to have him with us. As you know, we get together every week and we talk some Raiders football. Matt, since the last time we talked, they went from a zero points against Minnesota, which was unacceptable, and to an explosion of 63 points. It is the most in franchise history. It's a record in the NFL from going zero to 63. A dominant performance in every single way. We're going to break it down, but I want to just get your initial thoughts as you were watching the game and what stood out to you. Well, before we get to the Raiders, and they did play really well, I do have to say that um, one of my policies covering football and even as a fan is I think it's fine to criticize things on the field. Uh, I always try to avoid saying a team or players are soft or that they quit because I think football is a violent game. Um you're out there putting your body on the line. And I think it's really easy for somebody who's not there to say that some uh, players aren't giving 100%. And I think it's kind of a cop out. With that being said, the Chargers quit on Thursday. <laughs> like, there is no doubt in my mind that, that that was a team that once it got to be 7 nothing or whatever early on, they stopped playing. I've never seen a team just completely looked disinterested the way they did. I know they scored three touchdowns in the second half, but if you play a full NFL game, especially when you, a team gets up by that much, the other team's got to do something well at some point. Um, so I thought it was just a disgraceful performance by the Chargers. I thought it was – you knew that they were, Brandon Staley was a goner uh, during the game. Um, I think if the owner could have fired him during the game, he might have, but he had waited for the next day. So it was it was brutal for, for the Chargers, but – Kudos to the Raiders because they really did play well. They came out. They smelled blood. Antonio Pierce made it clear in the half interview that he, he wanted to continue to put the foot on the gas pedal and continue to show, you know, what the team was capable of. And I think it was great for the Raiders to be on the right side of a game like that, uh, especially after coming off a tough 3 other loss. I agree with you. All right, let's talk about the game a little bit in more detail. First of all, let's start offensively. Terrific performance by Aiden O'Connell. They've been wanting him to attack downfield all, all four days leading up to the game. I had asked him, Antonio Pierce, Bo Hart agree about the importance um, about attacking down the field. AP had made it extremely clear. I've said it every week. I'm going to continue to say it. This is what I want. He got what he wanted. Your thoughts on the Raiders' offense? I thought that you said right from the jump they wanted to push the ball downfield, and you saw them do it uh, with Devontae Adams, with Trey Tucker, Jacoby Myers. They they utilized all their uh, options at their disposal. And I thought that was, a, in general, that was a great sign for the Raiders because it was a great game for Aiden O'Connell, and you look at how they were able to spread the ball around, not just to those three guys I mentioned, but also Hunter Renfro, Michael Mayer, uh, no Josh Jacobs, but Amir Abdullah, Amir White had a great game. Brandon Bolden uh, dusted off the uh, the uh, run game reps, which we don't usually see from him. And he had a big – I think it was his longest run in five or six years in the NFL for that touchdown. Um, they were really able to get uh, contributions from everywhere offensively. Uh, and I think that it, it was a fun night. I think if you're – the most important thing is very rarely in the NFL – do you get to – and this is for any team. It uh, doesn't matter if you're the best team in the league, worst team in the league. Very rarely in the NFL do you get to enjoy a blowout like that. Um, you know, that's a homecoming-style blowout, thinking of college football. Um, so I think when you're when you're a fan base and you're a team and you get one of those nights like that, soak it up, enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Let's turn to the defense now where Patrick Graham, and you and I have talked about this all year, one of the most – Unsung coaches in the National Football League. When you look at the amount of resources from the salary cap invented in, invested in this defense and what he's done, multiple guys being able to score, you just look at what this defense was. Minus his linebacker coach, who's spending more time with the offensive line. 
and Antonio Pierce. It's just amazing what Patrick Graham has done. There are not enough accolades to shower on that uh, terrific coach. I agree, and I think that that was also an example of being aggressive early. I mean, obviously, the, the other team has to fumble, but the Raiders, you can see they were making an effort, concerted effort to go get the ball and, you know, put a hat in the ball and, and try to force turnovers early. Uh, Jack Jones with a great job with film study, literally, I mean, he jumped the bubble screen and scored a touchdown. So that means he's paying attention and, and knew the play was coming. Um, they were able to get contributions, not just from Max Crosby, but from all over the defense. I mean, you saw some of the second and third string defensive line playing in the second half, making plays in the backfield and, and getting pressures. Um, I, I think it was a great effort. I think it, it does kind of signify what we've talked about of Patrick Graham being consistent throughout the entire year. If there's one thing that you can say about the Raiders that's been consistent, I think, from start to finish, it's been their defense for the most part. I mean, if they had a couple of bad games or bad performances mixed in, it, 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 it was one game and that was it, or, 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 some, or part of a game and that was it. Consistently, week to week, they've been the best unit uh, of this team. I agree. All right, let's talk about the Jack Jones interception, as you know, I've seen a ton of football in my life. Uh, Matt, I don't know that I've seen a prettier interception. Have you? Man, that was, that was beautiful. I, I'll tell you what, I don't think I've ever seen a screen pass intercepted like that. I've seen screens to the running backs intercepted where a quarterback drops back and tries to lob it over D lineman and he, overthrows them and a linebacker standing there and gets it or the D line makes an unbelievable play and jumps up. But I don't think I've ever seen like a little tunnel bubble screen like that get picked off because the defensive back read it and jumped the route in basically behind the line of scrimmage. Um, so that was a tremendous play on his part. And listen, when he had his troubles in new England, but he is a player that was drafted early and they want wanted to be a contributor. So he has talent. So the Raiders, I think in, when you're a team that's building for the future and you're taking, you know, the rest of the season as a developmental period, he's the type of player you want to take a chance on, see, get him in your program, see what he can do, and if you can get him to buy in. And I think you saw the physical gifts he has uh, mm -hmm. on display with that play because it was a, a heck of a catch because he, the, the ball is actually behind him and he had to make a one-handed play. Excuse me. But also you saw some of, you know, the mental processing of being able to realize, okay, this is this formation, this is this, they're going to come out and do this. And, and he was able to to be there uh, for the pass, waiting uh, in front of the receiver. Let's talk about special teams. I mean, they just continue to shine. Um, A.J. Cole's the best in the business. Daniel Carlson is. I mean, it, it just, to me, every facet of the Raiders – against the Chargers was tremendous coaching, which we'll get to in a minute. Offense, defense, special teams. It's, 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 it is special right now. What's what, what, what that game was like for this franchise. Definitely. And I think it's something you hope that they could build off of. Um, I know there were, were there two, I'm trying to remember all the turnovers. Um, I know obviously there was one on, on a return where the guy fumbled, but I'm trying, were there two special teams turnovers? I'm trying to remember. I, there was a bunch. That, that shows you how much how mm -hmm. dominant it was that we can't even remember what all the turnovers were. But the, the special teams were excellent um, when they did have to punt because it wasn't too often with the amount of points they were putting on the board. Um, but, you know, that's been – again, that's been a very consistent part of the Raiders all season long. And getting back to what you said about it being a special performance and what we, you know, we said about an enjoyable game for the fans and for the, the team – Hopefully, you know, you can build on it and, you know, now you go into a nationally televised game against a rival on Christmas Day against the Chiefs. Um, and, you know, you, you're playing with house money. You take your chances in Kansas City. You see what what they can do and and uh, and, you know, hope for the best. If you can keep carry that performance over, it should be a game. I agree. All right. I want to get to the impact of Antonio Pierce. Um, obviously they had, they had given pregame scouting to Jack Jones about that screen, 
they're the lowest penalized team in the NFL right now, which almost seems anti-Raider. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's amazing. And you look at physicality, he demands it. You look at what happened against Minnesota where they played so good on special teams and so good on defense but did nothing on offense, and basically he laid his will down. They fouled. They responded. I mean, the impact of Antonio Pierce. If you don't want him to get the job, that's fine. That's certainly your opinion. Not talking about you. I'm talking about people in general. But you cannot walk away from this not saying he has had an extremely positive impact sitting in the head coach's chair for the Raiders. Agree or disagree? I agree. I think also it's just that when you talk about the effort that they're playing with and the effort they're giving for him, um, he's been a breath of fresh air there. We all saw how happy they were to have him take over for, for Josh McDaniels. I think that enthusiasm has carried over through the first six games of, the, of his tenure. And now he's got an opportunity the last three games to, to see, okay, test yourself against – uh, the Chiefs team, they don't look like the vintage Chiefs, but it's still the Chiefs, still premier uh, team in the NFL, defending Super Bowl champs. Uh, and then you have two winnable games. They can beat the Colts, even though the Colts right now are pushing for the playoff spot. And they can beat the Broncos, especially at home after they won uh, in Denver in week one. So th this is an opportunity, I think, for him to, again, you don't know what Mark Davis is thinking. You don't know for sure – I don't know if he's basing his decision on how these next three games go. I don't know if that would be smart, but I think that how these next three games go, if the Raiders come out and, and perform well and look, continue to look how they have, uh, I think it's a good, it's Antonio Pierce further solidifying his case for saying, Hey, I should stick around here and be the permanent head coach. Let's look ahead now to Kansas city. Um, it would be an upset for the Raiders to win. That that's that's no secret. That's not, you know, being any world breaking observation there by me. But I certainly think the Raiders are playing better than they were prior to playing the Chiefs in in Las Vegas. Um, I think the Chiefs are not playing as well as they were playing going into that game in Las Vegas. I think there's blood in the water. I think the Raiders have some confidence. I, to me, a win Christmas Day would be an upset, but it's not as much of an upset as I think it would have been a short, just a short time ago. I think the Raiders are better. The Chiefs aren't as good. What are your thoughts on this game? I think that's fair. I think when you look at the Chiefs the last couple of weeks, really all season, uh, their passing game has not been what we're accustomed to. Terrible. Um, it, it's. I think that they had Tyreek Hill, who's one of the premier receivers, if not the premier receiver in the NFL, and they let him go. You know, they for trade and money purposes, contract stuff. And I think they felt like, okay, we can allocate that money to different guys and to different positions, and we can still be really good with Patrick Mahomes. Um, and they were able to make it work. Obviously, last year they won a Super Bowl. You know, they had Travis Kelsey, they had Patrick Mahomes. They got enough from their receivers. This year right now, they are not getting enough from their receivers. I mean, I think it's gone too far in the other direction where they have too many Jags, just the guys out there um, at receiver. I do like Rasheed Rice, the rookie. I think he's going to be a good, good pro. He's shown some flashes already. But you look at – I know he's, he's – uh, you know, banged up now, but Sky Moore is he, before he went on IR has just not been what they hoped. Marquez Valdez Scantling has shown why the Packers never really trusted him. Kadarius Tony has shown why the Giants, who desperately needed receivers, traded him last year uh, when they had a winning record because they just you can't rely on him. He's going to screw up by either dropping passes or lining, misaligning or, or things like that. Um, so the the Chiefs are, are definitely vulnerable. Um. I've said that they are the favorite in the AFC until beaten, until proven otherwise, because of Mahomes and and, and Reed. But you know, if they don't have the home field advantage, they could be very vulnerable in the playoffs. Now, 
in the immediate future, looking at, at Monday's game, I do think they beat the Raiders. I think that it's a big game for the Chiefs. They know what's at stake for their playoff seating. Um, their home, Arrowhead, National TV. But I think the Raiders played them tough, and I, I it wouldn't be a, a major shocker to me to see Vegas win that game uh, if they're able to carry carry some of last week over and if the Chiefs continue to kind of uh, sputter offensively. So what's your prediction for Christmas Day? My prediction is a 24-17 win for the Chiefs. I think that they, do ju- they can get just enough offensively. I think that Aiden O'Connell should have some more confidence, some more experience playing uh, going into this game that he did the first time he played the Chiefs. You know the Chiefs are going to be tough with Steve Spagnuolo looking to, to make mm-hmm. life tough for a young QB. Um, but I think that the, the Kansas City o- o- ultimately gets it done uh, and wins at home. But I do think the Raiders uh, acquit themselves pretty well uh, to the national TV audience. All right, so let's talk about Christmas for the Raiders. Christmas is coming up, obviously. Got the big game coming up at Arrowhead. If you're Santa, what are the three gifts you're bringing the Raiders? The three gifts I'm bringing the Raiders, and this isn't – are you talking about for the game on Monday or just in future in general? In general to the organization. Number one, I'm bringing stability think that that is the one thing that this organization has lacked for the better part of two decades. And I'm bringing stability with my GM and head coach. Now, whether that's Champ Kelly and Antonio Pierce sticking on, or if they go outside of it, um, we'll see. But I think that is, if you ask most Raider fans, um, I mean, obviously wins, they want wins, just win. But I think most Raider fans said they want something stable, something long-term. So number one, if I'm Santa, uh, I'm bringing stability. Um, hmm. Number two, I'm bringing a quarterback. And whether that is Aiden O'Connell or whether that is a rookie um, in the, this draft, I think that that's another thing. Even though the Raiders did have Derek Carr for a while and he had some success there, the Raiders haven't had a true – you know, they, they haven't had that star quarterback that they had during their heyday in the 60s and 70s and 80s. You know, they've had success with Rich Gannon, you know, won an MVP, went to a Super Bowl. Obviously, Derek Carr had some really successful seasons. Um, going back into the 90s, they won games with Todd Marinovich and Jeff Hostetler and, and all those guys. But they haven't had that ace in the hole, you know, blue chip quarterback. So I'm bringing – a stable franchise quarterback. I don't know if he'll be top three or top five in the league, but a guy that you can count on, rely on year in and year out. And number three, I'm trying to think what number three would be. Hmm. Number three is... And I, this will be tough because you have to beat the Chiefs next year and unseat them to do it. So maybe that next year. I'm bringing a home playoff game at some point in the next two years. So you can cash in at some point in the next two years. Because think if you think about it, the Raiders have not had a home playoff game, um, I think, since the Super Bowl year, if I'm not mistaken, because they were on the road in 2016 um, and they were on the road – uh, two years ago in Cincinnati. So I'm bringing a home playoff game back to uh, to the Silver and Black, and it'll be the first one at Allegiant Stadium. All right, that is Matt Halatica Claus giving you his three <laughs> gifts to the Raiders. I think it's pretty fascinating. Interesting time, Matt. I'm going to give my prediction closer to game day. I got some things I want to wait and evaluate. Talk, I want to see some people's health and where kind of they're going to fetter out on all the process. But a lot of good stuff coming. Thank you for joining us today. Now, remember, you can find me on Twitter at Hondo Carpenter, H-O-N-D-O-C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R. You can find me on Instagram uh, at Hondo S-R-S-R. Stands for senior. Also, if you don't want to watch the video, you can go watch, just listen to the audio on Spotify or on Apple. We also do a second podcast every day, which is just for the audio only audience. Make sure you check it out. So, 
from thespun.com, the editor and publisher. That is, of course, the great Matt Holadic. I'm Hondo Carpenter from Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast, part of the Fans First Sports Network. We'll see you all again later.